Yeah, let's run it. Yo, what's up, guys? Welcome back to Legacy Loading. This is episode 11, and we have a very special guest here, Mr. Max Chuni. Yeah, what's up? We're actually filming this at eleven eleven. Shit. No, 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 no. It's a lucky. It's a lucky <laughs> episode. Dude. It could have been. We're, one thing we want to start doing is is introing our guests a little bit because we yeah. literally just go off the rip. But some people are like, "Hey, can you introduce people that that yeah. are on? What? Like, have you had like what would how would you even describe yourself in a few words? Because obviously we know what you do and a little bit about you. But like, if you had to describe yourself, so loud and annoying, man. man. <laughs> I, I I I don't know. I guess my what I do is evolved over time so much. Mm -hmm. Now I like to, I think I still tell people that I'm a YouTuber. That's, that's what I want to yeah. identify as and classify as. Really? Yeah. I, I usually say I'm a YouTuber first and then I say, but I also have some businesses. Mm -hmm. um, what, what about just saying you're an entrepreneur? I don't know. I feel like that's so, yeah, uh, that, broad. so broad. Yeah, yeah, yeah it, because it, I, I don't like to answer something because I know someone's going to like have a follow up on everything mm. I say. So I try to be as direct <laughs> as possible. Like I'm a YouTuber that has a candy company and a clothing company. Yeah. Like, okay. And so, come on. There's no follow up to that. There's no, I, yeah, oh, yeah, I, yeah, that makes yeah, sense. No. Cool. <laughs> I, don't, I, 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 I always say I just dabble in a lot of stuff. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And you're a, a new podcast host. Oh yeah. I am a, get right into that, yeah. now I'm a podcast host. Shout it's, out to uh don't be, don't sour. be sour. Don't be sour show. The new podcast. It's live now. We can put it's, it in the description. It's box. it's yeah. the new way. I mean, every, the podcast thing is is something new to me for mm -hmm. sure. But it's it's interesting. How yeah. do you guys like in doing this? I mean, I we, we didn't know. We yeah. knew we knew we wanted to start it, but we didn't know like where it was going to get to and yeah. how fast things picked up and how much people actually really do mm -hmm. like the long form. So it's been it's been amazing so far. It's yeah. been awesome. There's do you been, consume long form content or do you just you're like I think this is what the people want? Um, not really. I'm actually not like a huge consumer of media personally so i know joe will listen to some while he's editing mm -hmm. and stuff so it, yeah. it depends but like for me I like podcasts yeah i like them but i just don't i don't listen to them regularly see i actually i'm not a big fan of listening to podcasts i well i guess they are podcasts but like if i'm gonna listen to mm -hmm. a long format interview or something like that i want to be i want to have the video yeah even yeah. though i'm just listening i, I want the video to be there mm -hmm. i don't want to just have their video and then turn it off and just listen to it yeah. i really want to see people's you know reactions. expressions yeah. and yeah, yeah reactions I mean, and, and, and stuff so so i think including the video into mm -hmm. it is more so even like this i consider it like a like a show that you mm -hmm. you're pulling the audio that people can listen to just the audio if they want but like mm -hmm. it's kind of meant to be yeah. watched rather yeah. than like listen. i'll keep it up on my screen i'm not like looking at it the whole time but it's there like I'll, yeah i'll take a glance <laughs> at it look at it and then i like go back to editing yeah it. you feel like i just like having it there it. and seeing expressions and stuff yeah what yeah. um what made you want to start it how long were you thinking about it for and why did you finally pull the trigger on it because it's like a big commitment i don't it is a big commitment i, I don't know I, i've seen like i said my brother has been doing it for a super long time and to be honest i never really thought that i would get into it and even, even to this day i now it's just simpler to call it a podcast but i kept when i thought of the idea i was like no i don't want it to be a podcast i want it to be like a show yeah. i want it to be like the show and this experience because i wanted I, like that. I was like i wanted people to watch it i don't mm -hmm. want people to listen to it i want like you need to watch it and yeah. now that i filmed a couple it starts being one of those things that if you just listen to the audio, a lot of the parts won't even make sense because you don't know what people are doing mm -hmm. because yeah. it's such a visual yeah, yeah. thing. And yeah. um, I, I don't know. I, I, I think it was one of those things that I'm already so overwhelmed with, you know, work and trying to make uh, social media content. I was like, there's no way I can add another yeah. thing to my plate yeah. of doing, doing this podcast. But then I kind of thought about it more and I was like, look, if I can get someone to edit the content, mm -hmm. I don't need to edit that. Yeah. And, and it should be almost like streamlined when people edit it. Like mm -hmm. once they get a couple down, it's yeah. very like, they should know how long it takes to edit each episode because yeah. yeah. they're roughly the same. And I was like, look, it, it should just be about an hour to an hour and a half mm -hmm. once a week right. that I need to take right. to sit down yeah. with someone. And I think it's a, a lot of the content that I create for YouTube, actually all the content, um, I actually talk about this with this huge YouTuber that I had on the show yesterday, but um, you know, we, I make content for people who already watch my content. Mm -hmm. And so it's a good and bad thing, right? Mm -hmm. So I, I make stuff for people who already know about me, um, yeah. but it's really hard yeah. to grow. Like I don't make social media content to try to grow my audience. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing. So I thought that this would be one step in the direction mm -hmm. of trying to get my name out there while, you know, still being myself, but this could kind of trickle out into the world yeah. of people searching for the other people or people who are yeah, into yeah, podcast yeah. and mm -hmm. then they find that and then they want to see, yeah. you know, my other social media content. That's, that's yeah. what's going on with us right, right now. Like people that. are recognizing us for the <laughs> podcast and we're like, holy shit. Yeah. yeah. More than anything. And yeah. I think that's actually a smart idea for you personally, because you, all of your content, I said it like multiple times, I still watch your content all the time, even though like, 
you actually don't do like viral content or anything. Yeah. You're just like vlogging, but your energy and like the way you speak yeah. is why people fuck with you, basically. You know yeah. what I mean? So it, it, that's it, actually it, perfect. It's a double edged sword, man. It's like, you know, I'm. I don't know if it's detrimental to my growth. It, it, it is to the, that's, I always complain about like, I oh, know my socials aren't growing, but I'm not mm -hmm. doing anything to try to make it grow. Yeah. I'm just keeping feeding this, being yourself, basically. this yeah. beast that yeah. I'm keeping in the, in the cave, you know, like I'm not letting it out. Yeah. And um, so, but it's interesting. Well, you said people are, are you know, spotting yeah. you from the, from the podcast. That'll be, that'll be the big day. When I get stopped in the store, they're like, oh, you're the host of that, yeah, yeah. the podcast yeah, 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 show. Yeah, yeah. That happened to other people, like, holy that shit. That means so like, much, yeah, yeah. yeah. And then happen. I'll be like, I have a YouTube channel too. They're like, what? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that'll be the big day. No, that'll be, it'll come sooner than you think, seriously. Yeah, yeah. no, honestly, like, right after, like, the first few weeks even, people at the gym, they recognize, like, so we had, we've had some pretty, like, I, don't know, I hate to use the word like relevant guests, yeah. but people recognize the guests from, from the podcast. They're like, Oh, I saw you on yeah. the podcast and that's how I found your content. And we're like, what? <laughs> like, yeah. yeah. You watch our and we also just thought that our views subs. are not even so high right now. Yeah. You know? yeah. So it's, it's actually really it's cool. very like, it's very, um, especially when it's new, like right now you're in a phase where people are going to be sharing it a lot. Yeah. So right now is like a really important time to keep your foot on the gas and like mm -hmm. stay really consistent because people are going to be talking about, they're going to be like, Oh, another upload, another upload. They're going to yeah. count on it. Like every Saturday at a time at yeah. nine, we drop one. And so like in your case, if people are going to start expecting like to, to hear your voice and see who you have on like yeah. every week, that's just what you stick to. And it's just going to yeah. keep building. Well, yeah. We're in the right environment. <laughs> yeah. No, it, I think it, it's really cool because a lot of times whenever someone starts podcasts, you get the kind of comments of like, Oh, another person started a podcast mm -hmm. and other people put on a podcast. But I, I think that. the value that people bring is you could have the same guests that mm -hmm. have been on a lot of interviews. Yeah. Right. Um, it, it makes sense. Like they're going to, you're going to get the people that you have access to yeah. that you're surrounded by. But I think each time someone's on an interview, it, if you're, I'm super new to the whole, like being a host and interviewing mm -hmm. people. But I think when you have the ability to pull information or ask questions that are different than they've been asked before, and maybe not this, the same kind of generic stuff. Mm -hmm. Um, because I think a lot of times, depending on how big the name is, you, people have already heard the answers of yeah. some of the origin right. stories as much as possible. So it's like, yeah. what can you kind of add and, and get a new mm -hmm. spin so people can see a different side of maybe someone's favorite influencer or celebrity yeah. or business yeah. owner. Um, and then that's the value yeah. that you brought in. And then they start, you know, yeah. not only coming to your show, depending on who you have on, they just want to see every episode. How you exactly. interact with that person. Th that's yeah. what we're trying to do. Just basically yeah. um, like whoever comes, you know, like Alex was here, he was smoking. And stuff like that. just yeah. be yourself like chill yeah say whatever you want like, there's much, nothing that you can't yeah. say like in pretty much every guest we had was like already on a podcast so yeah, yeah. it wasn't like anyone's really first podcast so a lot of the, the basic questions are already out there so like we kind of like just give it like a different y'all are good because you got you know three of you so yeah you can, the interact mm -hmm. and the banter yeah. um you know biggest the big fear that i have with starting kind of my show is like okay like once i mm. get through all all the guests that i know then yeah. what you know after you get let's say I got 15 people I have access to, we'll say, mm -hmm. you know, and then after that 15, what do you do? Well, yeah. Bro, like, here's the thing. Run it again. We, no, we, we <laughs> thought we thought about that too when we started, but there there's never a shortage of people. Yeah. There's never a shortage of people that are willing to, to help and that want to be on. And you're going to have people from out of town that are coming in. You're like, hey, we have an hour. Let's let's run this. And yeah. every week is someone is here. You're li yeah. like, literally, we thought about that after like episode three. And it's every week we are connected with another person, another person that, w that wants to be on. And so I wouldn't even stress about that right now because yeah. you're just going to like week after week, you're going to have someone lined up and you're just going to be like, oh shit, like I'm not even thinking about running out because you're just always going to have that next it's person. It's kind of like when people ask me like, uh, you know, how do you keep thinking of like YouTube content? I was like, to be honest, like every time I finish a video, I have no idea what the next video is going to yeah, be. Yeah. And it's I just the next day. Just pick up the good. camera yeah. and I'm like, ah, this is what yeah. I'm, what I'm filming today. Yeah. And a big goal that I have is to try to make sure that every guest that I have on the show is someone that is physically in the studio. Mm -hmm. I really don't want, yeah. as there's a lot of people that I want to interview yeah. that, you know, are maybe in Canada or something. And so it's gonna be really tough, but I'm like, okay, yeah. how can I get this person here? Yeah. Because yeah. I think it's so much better than having like a virtual for sure. Mm -hmm. You also, you're also adding to the experience, right? Like to be on the podcast, it's not as simple as just like popping up your laptop and like sitting in your living room. Like you want them to be at yeah. the studio, right? Yeah. Like you, you were doing shots, you were playing games and shit. Like that's why it's like part of the that. experience. Yeah. You, know? you mm -hmm. need to have that. And I think that like, that's the spin that you're going to put on your podcast, right? Like podcasts as a whole are not oversaturated. Um, it's because everyone that starts their own has their own unique spin and that's going to be yours. Like yours is going to be that game show that like max energy. And like, that's, that's going to be that. And there's gonna be nothing else like that. I really so, like mm -hmm. idea behind your podcast like that yeah like, yeah i really like it hey, no, thanks, it's good. It's I it yeah i watched it with a christian first one i really liked it i i, I think you know 
I guess it's not, not so much when I started YouTube because there weren't a lot of people starting YouTube, but I think if everyone listened to anyone saying, don't get into this because it's mm. too saturated, mm. then it's like shutting down everyone's dreams before they even exactly. kind of can start. And there's, I think there's not only room for everyone to excel in every single field, mm. but there's also room for someone to change something that's been a certain way for yeah. so long. So exactly. just because someone's been... So just because something is saturated doesn't mean that you can't bring value and completely change the norm of, mm-hmm. of what people have been expecting, you know? Yeah, definitely. What's like scholarships? Why, why, is, why is Joe Rogan so big also? Like, because yeah. he has a, like different, different like teams and everything, like different people come. With some people he's like doing, mm-hmm. I don't know, smokes. With some people like he talks about business. With some people he's like mm-hmm. uh, astronauts. I don't know. Yeah. And, and it, with Joe Rogan, it's a prime example. I, I haven't consumed a lot of, now I'm starting to get into more watching uh, mm-hmm. different podcast episodes yeah. more because I'm trying to figure out what is their setup, yeah, and, you know, what yeah. kind of like questions are they asking type of stuff so I can become a better mm-hmm. host. But, you know, I thought coming out of the gate, I was like, okay, I need to have the best camera quality possible yeah. in the sickest mm-hmm. studio. And then, you know, Joe Rogan's like, what, what the biggest podcast, mm-hmm. the, one of the biggest uh, sure. in like the world. Yeah. And like, I it's look at like it, I'm like, basic setup. I'm like, like I'm like, it's the, dark the, as hell. That's the camera. Yeah. Uses. Really? Yeah. yeah. Oh, that's I look at it. I'm like, I'm like, does he have any lights? In this? It's like so dark. And it's, <laughs> yeah. it's, I mean, I know, you know, he's got money, you know, there's some sort of money <laughs> yeah. into there, but I'm like, some sort, maybe. Yeah. But, but I'm like, it doesn't, that's really the camera that he uses. Yeah. 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 Oh, wow. Or at yeah. one point, shout out, maybe, Joe Rogan. Yeah. shout out Joe Rogan. You know, I yeah. just so they're filming with a, a camcorder, mm-hmm. you know, on that. And I actually had a, a YouTube video that I uploaded yesterday. I was in Best Buy buying some more cameras for the podcast, and mm-hmm. I I grab a camcorder and I I kind of reminisce to when I started YouTube. Everyone started with camcorders, mm-hmm. and I talk about how simpler life was with that because you didn't think as much about. Yeah. getting the shot, setting up the lighting. Cause you know, when, when I film now with my YouTube videos, I don't use auto on my cameras. Mm-hmm. I, I set the lighting, I set the white balance. I, and every single shot I have to adjust the lighting. Okay, I'm talking my car, let me check the lighting, look at my hand, like I have to do all this stuff. Yeah. With, when I had that camcorder, it was just a turn on, just, I filmed. Just I, I, I go, yeah. And I, I, I talk about how I think I was actually more, I, I used the word authentic back then, but I think what it is is I, my videos were extremely raw and mm-hmm. my first thought rather than, now with my content, it's not that I, I script out my videos, but a lot of what yeah. I say, I've already processed how, what I'm going to say yeah. before yeah. that. Clip like you're is setting up your happen. camera, you're like getting into character, kind of. I'm like, okay, I'm, so I'm, I'm going like, to say this, yeah. and and because most of my shots on my on my YouTube channel, actually, I don't have a lot of cuts in my videos unless it's going mm-hmm. to a new scene. Mm-hmm. So a lot of times, I whatever I'm saying is all one take, so I don't do a lot of like cuts. Yeah. So I'll, I'll have to refilm it a lot because I want to say the entirety of what I'm doing mm-hmm. in the correct format and. Sometimes it takes me a lot yeah. longer than others. So, so you're still uh, you're still editing all your YouTube videos, right? If I film it, I edit it. So I have Oz mm-hmm. who works with me, and Shout out he Oz. does. Yeah, he's yeah. A, amazing. Shout and um, but if he goes on like a trip with me, mm-hmm. and he, I'm like, hey, come with me to film a, a vlog, which is not often I do that. Mm-hmm. Um, but if I I do, he'll edit that. Anything that he shoots, he will edit. Mm-hmm. And and obviously, if I if it's a third person edit of me. Clearly, I didn't shoot that. So, yeah. but but if I shot it, I'll I'll mm-hmm. I'll edit it. The only time I, I wouldn't is if he's filming a bunch of stuff, and I'm like, hey, I hear some extra vlog clips that are before that edit and after that edit. Can you mm-hmm. just like put them together? Yeah. But I would say ninety eight percent of my YouTube videos are edited. Is by that me. because you just like editing, or you don't want to put it in someone else's hands? Um, it kind of depends on the the video, to be honest. So, I'm going through a phase right now where I'm in this limbo of mm-hmm. getting pissed off about you know view fluctuation and so normally i like to think that i all my videos are very high production value in terms of you know yeah. there's like a a theme there's you know mid there's b-roll shots and yeah, and, the and establishing yeah, shots and drone and all that stuff and when i go to edit those i really like mm-hmm. it because there's like a flow to it um now my recent couple of videos and right now i'm just kind of doing a different type and i'm more just yeah. extremely raw so it's just like clip 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 mm-hmm. clip which i look at as boring and no thought put into it. And a lot of people are like, no, this is what we want. This is like authentic and raw. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But when I edited, I'm like, I, I edited this in 30 minutes mm-hmm. right. compared, yeah. compared to like the three, four hours. Well, I think, I think that there is something to be said about like what the audience really wants to see. Like you see like some of the very curated Instagram posts not doing as well as like bathroom selfies and shit. Like people yeah. want to see like kind of behind the curtain a little bit. So I think that raw, I mean, same thing with like Marco's video that he edited on his, on yeah. iMovie from his iPhone, like that did yeah. more views. For Literally the one reason. video like, that I didn't edit, yeah, and he edited on like iMovie, it has the most views. 
How many well, times we, we said it? Literally. Uh, yeah. It's the most like, like it's the most like uh, raw video ever, and it got it has like the most views on the channel. On all of our pictures, like together, he like we take time 10, 15 yeah, yeah. minutes to take a picture, upload a picture. Okay, I take a mirror selfie and yeah, go. Like, fucking twenty thousand yeah, likes. Yeah, like. No, it, it's 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 true, and I guess as a content creator, I get it in my mind a lot about thinking that the production value needs to be this high. And I guess yeah. I look at it as if I upload a video that is what is deemed to be more raw and authentic because it doesn't have all this drone and music and B-roll yeah. of like all these shots, you know, people see that as more raw and real, right? Mm -hmm. I look at it as this took no effort to make. Yeah. And for that yeah. reason, it, it didn't challenge me at all. And it's, it's lazy. And it's like, I can, I could throw those types of videos together mm -hmm. day after day. Um, when I do these videos where it has multiple establishing shots, I like to call them, you know, and if, if I'm going to go to Best Buy, it doesn't just go from the gym to Best Buy. It's like, okay, yeah. how did I get to Best Buy? Drone let's, shot. let's film the car driving. Let's have the shot pulling in. Let's yeah. get the drone. So it establishes that we're at Best Buy. I, I looked at it as like a, a better flowing video. And sometimes I don't know if people I, like we will talk down on it. I'm like, man, I, I don't think you guys are like appreciating it. Yeah. As I, think, I think that's just the difference between the casual viewer and the creator itself, mm -hmm. right? Like as a content creator, you are watching those and you're recognizing all the B-roll, oh, yeah. all the, like you, yeah. you guys understand that. But for the majority of your audience, it's just some kid that doesn't know anything about that. Yeah. And, like they're watching it, but they don't understand the effort that goes into it. So I think that that, that really could be. Yeah. I, I think it's like, because like, basically Christian and you like set up that like from only vlogs to like setting that up to a much higher like mm -hmm. no, Christian and Christian increased the 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 a lot yeah the whole YouTube the like quality standards yeah. on YouTube when yeah. you started doing these edits and, way back and then the day. everyone started doing the same so kind of people like probably get like oh everyone's like right now every single YouTuber has a freaking best camera and like mm -hmm. yeah. edit editors and everything so people like to again come back to like normal raw videos and and everything. Well, as I said, for Jesse, for example, yeah. I'll give him, for example, like when he was doing, when he was growing in that time, I loved his videos. Now, of course, I still love him, but he's now like trying to do- It's very commercial. Like more like, commercial yeah. viral videos. And I actually like his videos way before, like more those yeah. kind of raw videos when he was growing than right now, but like that's kind of a business. Yeah. I appreciate so. both, honestly. Like, I appreciate, yeah. I, I appreciate like, both. like Christian's content, obviously like the, what goes into it, but also I like, I do enjoy watching like a Sush video where it's just like him just raw yeah, as fuck, like way, walking yeah. around. I like, like mixed. Yeah. But for you, like for example, I told you already multiple times I watch your videos, like literally because of that. Like you have like ideas. I'm like, mm -hmm. you really take time to just to film yeah. that one minute clip you park in your car. Like, you know, yeah. I, when they, and that's what I appreciate because I know how mm -hmm. it goes also when I'm like edit by yeah. myself. As like you, a content creator, I, yeah, like, I exactly. see that. Like you literally got out of your car, you set the, the tripod up, you pulled into the spot, had to get out, get the camera set it up again, like you get out of the car and people yeah. don't appreciate that. Like those people, little things like. Even the little things I'm like, even for that is like, make sure when I, when I set the, when I set the camera up for that, for example, is I need to make sure I focus on the car then mm -hmm. I switch it to, to, I put it to manual focus yeah. so that when I'm driving, driving yeah. up, it doesn't try to rack focus right. while I'm doing that. And I set the white balance. So it's like, I do yeah. all these different things. No one, no one understands that. <laughs> yeah. And, which and is, which is like in so video, much three second clip, bro. Yeah. And, and, and I guess, and again, like, I don't know if it's like a, a, a cocky thing, but when I upload these, raw videos and people mm -hmm. are like, oh, I love this. I'm like, guys, like this was me being a super lazy YouTuber. Yeah. Like this is I, me well, not putting effort. And, I, and if I don't put effort, I feel like it doesn't show that I'm I, trying to mm -hmm. improve my craft. I think, I think you're conflating though, how much time it takes you with what constitutes good content. Like I think you, you've set the bar for yourself so high that anything below that mm -hmm. you you're yeah. like disappointing yourself but truly like that doesn't mean that it's not as good content yeah. it, it totally depends on the subject matter and, and how you're presenting it and so like i would just say like it, if you're enjoying it and your audience is enjoying it i wouldn't put so much pressure on yourself to for to like to have to put like a 10 out of 10 the most important is the, you enjoy in the end of the day mm -hmm. yeah in my opinion definitely if you enjoy your own like what you created then like yeah, and, and, and I, I do enjoy pretty much everything, and that's kind of circling back. We deviated from the original question a little bit of the, like, editing my own videos, mm -hmm. and a big reason that I like to do it besides the fact pushing myself creatively um, is that even when I'm editing these super raw clips, um, I feel like I'm the only person that can edit the video to make it come out how I want to yeah. because my humor is yeah. super strange and like the way that I film clips mm -hmm. and a lot of times with YouTube is I film them actually like out of order and I don't know if it makes it like less authentic, but sometimes mm -hmm. I 
you know, want to want the next scene. I had just said like, all right, let's go check on the, the Sour Strips headquarters with that, you know, something, mm -hmm. something comes up that I need to go do. And the Sour Strips headquarters wasn't the next thing that I yeah. did, but the thing that I'm going to do is something that I want to include. Mm -hmm. So I'll film that, but I, I process that I'm like, okay, I said I need to go to the Sour Strips headquarters. So now I'm going to film this clip as if that was after this, the yeah. headquarters. And then when I go to the, to the Sour Strips could be later that day. It could even be the next day. It doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. I then will end that clip with then transitioning of, of saying something of how we're going to go to the other clip that I mm -hmm. other filmed. And so my videos are just like really out of order. And then yeah. I piece them together to make it flow for the, for the audience member. Yeah. And yeah. I don't know if, again, I don't know if that's not authentic. If I could just be like, actually instead we're, we're doing this, but in my head, I'm like, no, I, I said I was gonna do that. So now I need mm -hmm. to go to this. I don't want to confuse people. Yeah. So yeah. I don't know. I get how long would you say that it takes you to uh, film and edit video? The current yeah. videos I'm making the past couple that I've made these super raw ones. I mean, filming is just literally how long, how many clips are in there. And then editing, editing a video that has no B roll or anything. Shoot. That's kind of 30 minutes. I mean, oh, like, wow. and, that, wow. and, that, and that's, I look, wow. I look at that because it's, it's, it's just, Dang. yeah, it's just clips, 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 yeah. clips. Um, there's no text. I don't spend a lot of time color correcting and doing mm -hmm. all that stuff. Um, when I have the video that has like the drone and has all that filming is like an impossible number to like quantify how long yeah, it took yeah. me. Mm -hmm. Um, but to edit a video that has all of the fancy stuff in it, I'd say at most like maybe like three hours. Yeah, because to me, if I have realized one thing is you need to you need to find the balance of not everything needs to be a movie because not only do people not care as much as you think they do, mm -hmm. but also if if you're trying to pump out content on a regular basis and you're spending eight to ten hours editing a video, it's not yeah. a good use of your time because like you don't like I I think you should. I think you're spending too much time putting into it because you're going to burn yourself out because you can't, you can't edit, you can't upload two, three times a week mm -hmm. in, 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 in and and do everything school, else yeah. in your yeah. life yeah. and edit for 10 hours on, you know, yeah. 30 hours in your week is editing the videos. Like yeah. you just, you just can't. Um, so it's, it's finding that balance of good and good enough. Yeah. You know? When do you, when do you usually edit? Like what's your, what's your day in the life? Like, uh, I sometimes I'll get the habit of, uh, sometimes I like to edit as I film almost oh, wow. so that, like, especially if I'm going into the next day, I'll yeah. edit all the footage before because I have this kind of internal timer, I guess, where when I'm filming a video, I've kind of, I can kind of count, okay, how many clips have I filmed? Those are all about this, but I can tell like how long the video yeah. is in my head and I'm like, how much more content do I need? Sometimes it helps when I edit a video up to what I've filmed yeah. so that then I can say, and this is where it gets into the crazy thing about YouTube is like, okay, I edit everything. It's at seven minutes. I'm like, okay, I need five more minutes of content. Mm -hmm. yeah. Let me go do some stuff. What have I already, yeah. already filmed? Yeah. And That's so like it's like, smart. Yeah. and yeah. so, so I, I know how much more I need to film. So I don't over film and under film, but I've been doing it for so long that I can pretty much know exactly filming of the beginning, the middle, the end, and know that it's going to be like a 15 minute video. Yeah. Um, but I, I guess I usually edit at, at nighttime and it's most of the time I'm finishing the video like the night before. It, it's rare that I get ahead because my, my videos are so kind of in order of my life. That's why I don't, yeah. I don't like filming a lot ahead of time. So everything is very real time. Cause I don't want something, I don't want someone seeing a behind the scenes, something on my Instagram, mm -hmm. that video. And then that video coming then, up a week and a half yeah, later, yeah, yeah. you know, yeah, it's, yeah. I'd rather it be pretty real time. And again, in order to film in real time and in that vlog life, you can't be spending 30 hours a week editing yeah. the videos. Yeah. So it's just draining. Yeah, exactly. You know how it is. Like, I, I have a question for you since like a lot of people obviously look up to you. You're one of the first <laughs> ones that started this everything. Do you watch anyone? And if I consume you do, a lot of YouTube. Actually. Yeah. What, yeah. What kind of content do you like? Like what do you prefer or who maybe if you want to mention anyone? So a lot of my friends don't upload videos anymore. So <laughs> I, I, I try to, I like a lot of people that, that I started with, you know, I loved all the OGs growing up um, that, you know, were started with Christian and myself. Yeah. Um, I, they don't really upload anymore. So really right now what I consume on YouTube is I, I like to see, unless I've been with a person the entire day, like if, I've, if I'm with Christian the entire time while I'm filming a video, I won't watch the video because I'm like, I know everything that happened in that video, right? Yeah. But I, I'll, I'll watch Christian's videos, but um, 
I, I'll, I'll skip a lot of the, like for me, I, I don't find interest that much in fitness anymore Yeah, in, in, in terms of, of consuming content, especially if it's like walk me through your workout. Like yeah. I don't care. Oh, like, yeah, I'm going to be honest. I'm always keeping that part. Workouts. I never yeah. watch anyone's like workouts. Yeah, exa- just, exactly. We're, we're all working out. You don't, yeah, my God, you don't I need don't, to know that. You know? So it, those all I'll skip. I, I, I enjoy lifestyle content. I like the vlogs. I like. Like Casey. Nice that. Yeah, it's we yeah. Bring it, up every podcast, yeah. No, he, it, he he's super good. And he he gave a lot of people inspiration for that that creating content. Um, it's super engaging though, short but super yeah. engaging. It, it is super engaging, but again, it's like you can only do that for so long because you're just gonna get drained. Right. Yeah. Yeah. It, if you look at every single super large YouTuber, most of them don't make content anymore because they because they so hard. they went through they went so hard for like a short yeah. period of time they burned, they burned themselves yeah. out. Whereas, you know, I've been uploading videos for 10 years exactly. without, a, without a break. I, think I was talking about that so much, sorry that I interrupted so you, crazy. but like when someone tries to like go viral and like, of course, grow their channels to like up to one, two, 10 million, then you need to like go with those viral videos all the time. Yeah. But there is yeah. like, you can't have so many ideas. Like probably when I, I mentioned Jesse already, he probably has already in advance like 10 videos prepared. You right. know what I mean? But like, that's yeah. like really, really tough to, to maintain. Like I will, if I already upload like three videos per week, right? I don't want to be the three viral videos. One can be like trying to be viral or whatever, how it goes, like girls or whatever. But one needs to be at least like something, yeah. something like day in life, just like pick up the camera and film. Well, that I because, guess the, yeah. the problem with, with viral content is that you're always having to one up yourself. Mm-hmm. You always have to do in the next extreme thing, you know, you it's, always it's, need to think it's yeah. crazy. And maybe that pushes a lot of people to continue to do these like insane things. Um, but for me, I'd rather not like it makes my life easier, but especially now is I'd rather get people. So just, they just enjoy whatever I do that I can do nothing and yeah. make it into content mm-hmm. somehow. Yeah. Right. Well, because I mean, that's that's what your fan that's, that's your fan goal. base, right? Yeah. If your fan base is just a bunch of people who clicked on your video because it was there, it was a prank video, or you were wearing a fat suit, like <laughs> then you need to continue I mean, doing those kind of well, videos. That's, that's, yeah. like, that's yeah. you're yeah. cultivating that audience, right? Like your audience is so hammered in to like just following you for you that like yeah, no matter what you do, whatever venture you're doing, that's yeah. like your podcast <clears> has a fucking hundred thousand. Just views, just like, you said he has when we when he was here, he was like, right now I have like nine videos in the vault, like ready to go. Yeah. And I, I guess I guess that's good, but for me, it's it's kind of like even with the podcast thing. Um, you know, I want to get to a point like this one the one that we uploaded today with Heidi Oz was it was like midnight last night. He's like wrapping it all up, and I'm like, I don't yeah. want to be at that. Yeah, point I was doing yesterday. He's like, I got to edit the other half. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And, and and I've had a big talk, and I don't. I also don't want or like people on my team doing stuff like that on the weekends and like mm-hmm. doing last minute stuff. So it's, it's comes to a me thing where I need to get better at structure on how I film, give people enough time in the work week to mm-hmm. not be like, Hey, it's Saturday. I need you to go in the office now and get this done. Yeah. But uh, you know, someone like Oz, he understands that especially something starting something new, there's going to be this kind of grind time where like yeah. shit's yeah. got to get done. Mm-hmm. Um, and then we're going to learn and adapt. And we yeah. actually had a big conversation on it yesterday, but moving forward, we're always going to try to be like two weeks ahead. Mm-hmm. And we've already filmed episode three, we filmed that uh, yesterday morning, actually, with nice. this nice. this guy. I don't. This actually be interesting because I'm t- I'm going to title it "The Biggest YouTuber You've Never Heard Of." Yeah, Corey showed me him. Like his views are insane. Oh, you, okay. Have you ever heard of Unspeakable? You ever heard of him? I've never heard. Like, of him. Yeah, it's, it's great. No. But he's dude. It's like mil- like every video is like three million, what four kind, million. What kind of content? Well, you're gonna watch. It's like it filling my house crazy. with like playground balls and shit. <laughs> It's like that super like YouTube, yeah, like yeah, the yeah. thumbnail, like it's all colorful and like, it's yeah. text. But, like but if the dude, the interview is like, it's wild because yeah. Yeah. you see, this, other, you that. see I, this other side of this guy Yeah. and not only is he creates this content for kids, right. Mm-hmm. But pulled up in a Ferrari was wearing a Richard Milley watch, <laughs> like is about to buy a million dollar McLaren in cash at the end of this year. I mean, but, I mean, nice. but like, he's so financially savvy, yeah. but it's just wild seeing this other side of YouTube. And, but he had a lot of really good insights on cre- creation and um you know creating content that builds your audience mm-hmm. interesting so th- that that was that was super interesting how did you get connected with him uh joe actually was friends with him through car stuff because he, yeah. he this guy has a, a porsche uh, gt2 rs okay which I didn't, I didn't know for a long time that you think like, like Joe had a Porsche GT3 RS and yeah. you'd think, oh, that's three is better than two. Not this, not in the Porsche world. In the, in the Porsche not world, in the Porsche it's, it's the low. Yeah. Wow. The GT2 RS it's is, track car. it's like, it's faster, more expensive than GT3 RS. Yeah. He pulled up in that? 
I no, mean, he pulled up in his Ferrari. <laughs> oh, okay. The Ferrari. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah, just in this Ferrari yeah. I've never seen before. <laughs> like, How it, long it, had he been making content for? He's been making content also for like 10 years. He started with Minecraft. Oh, wow. Okay. Damn, that's crazy. Oh, so he, was, actually, he was around for like the like real ad money, like real yeah. YouTube money. And I, how, how do we, I feel like we, we diverted into this guy. What was the question? Actually, I'm, I, have a, I have a question I that's, that's re- relatively relevant to that. But um, like you've been creating content for so long. <coughs> it's been like, at what stage of love are you in with the content you're creating right now? And was there a point where you felt like you were more in love with it? I feel right now I'm just in a tricky spot. I'm in like a, a weird mental space with YouTube and I've vented a lot on my YouTube, which I've turned out my audience hates because it sounds like constant complaining mm-hmm. about yeah. like YouTube in general. And it's not, luckily it's not just me, <laughs> you know, it's not, but uh, most people, everyone that I know in my space, everyone starting about maybe seven months ago, everyone just had like a dip in YouTube. Like mm-hmm. every, just every content creator, there's like this dip and it really impacted me because I was kind of on cloud nine getting, you know, minimum like 100K views in my videos, usually averaging like 115, 120, just every video mm-hmm. didn't, didn't matter. The th- I would put the weirdest thumbnails and titles and I just yeah. wouldn't put any thought and it was like easy. Yeah. Um, and my videos were still, I was putting a high quality, you know, and now I'm putting this, I was putting the same quality now. Now yeah. the videos like the low will be like 70 and you know the high will be like 100 105 and it's like now i'm stressing out and every video that gets a 10 out of 10 rating i just depress the rest of the day yeah. but i kind of had this realization that i look at my life and i realize that it really doesn't matter that much about about the views like it, yeah. it sucks and it's kind of a hit to my ego to be honest but i look back at to answer the question is is i was happier in the days when i was getting less views yeah. and, it, and it's an interesting mind, mindset shift because, uh, you know, when I was averaging 15, there's a, there's a clip that I put in a recent video and I go back and visit my trap house, which is where I started YouTube, right? Yeah, and that. there's a clip that I put in there. I'm like, th- thank you guys so much for like 13,000 subscribers. And I don't put this next part of the clip in the video, but I kept watching the video and I was like, mm-hmm. you know, we're, uh, you know, we got 13,000 subscribers, you know, but only about half of you guys are watching every single video. So I was getting like 7,000 views. Right. Yeah, yeah. And I was ecstatic, yeah. Yeah. ecstatic. And when I was getting like 20,000 yeah. views, I was ecstatic. Yeah. And now I'm like, boom, I'm only getting 70. I hate my life. I'm like depressed. <laughs> and, and it's weird. It's just like, it, it really is like a, an ego thing for me yeah. Yeah. because it's weird financially just from YouTube. I'm doing significantly better than I've ever done just from like financially mm-hmm. from YouTube, That's which is, great. and I'm getting less views and I'm still depressed. <laughs> like, yeah. it, it, so it, it's just ego thing to be honest. Yeah. I know like we, me and Marco, when we put a video out and I see it's like 10 out of 10, like he'll send me a screenshot of it. I'm like, yeah. Like yeah. I know how I just stayed up all night editing. Like we filmed for two days. I'm like, yep. yeah. I'm like, I'm like down. I'm like, fuck. But it still does good. And like, what? keep the comments are great. But like, it's just, it's an ego thing. Like it's. I, I yeah. think I think it, it comes back. It just comes back again to the standard you guys have set for yourselves. But that's why you're at the point where you're at because you expect greatness every yeah. time. Yeah. So it's like, it's it's a good thing and yeah, it's, it's a bad a thing, thing that it frustrates you because you're like, all right, well shit. Then what can I do to do better? Mm-hmm. And like, especially when you do a video that a you really love, well, well, and then yeah. it's like ten out of ten. That's what's so yeah. interesting is when I get a video that does perform super poorly. And again, my, if you go look at my last three, four uploads, they're extremely like, again raw, like it's clip after clip mm-hmm. after clip, which I call a lazy video. Yeah. It's me truly doing nothing. At least if I'm going to do nothing, I want it to have drone shots and B-roll in a million different yeah. scenes. Right. And like, that's and, and, not you, nothing, man. and you could just right. tell that like, he put a lot of thought into yeah. like how mm-hmm. this video is going to flow. But now I'm opening the same videos without yeah. all that fluff, which, but I call it lazy, right? Um, when the videos started dipping and when you get a 10 out of 10, you know, a lot of people are like, okay, learn from this. What, what can you improve on it? Mm-hmm. But to be honest in my head, I'm like, I'm putting out the best possible content I've ever put out in my life. Like the production value, the thought process behind the videos, everything is better than it's ever been. Mm -hmm. So there's not like, I don't know what else I can possibly do. And it it comes, it unfortunately with YouTube, it comes down to the title and the thumbnail. You you have to intrigue people enough to get them to click, but you don't want to piss people off. But you, so you just, you want, you want to test the waters and you don't know. And then, Everyone's like, don't care about it. So then you put a, a super <laughs> raw right, title and then, and then it does trash. Mm-hmm. And they're yeah. like, well, oh yeah, I'm not going to click on that. <laughs> so it's this constant game you're playing. Yeah. And, but it sucks because in my head, and I don't know if this is like a cocky thing, but in my head, it's like, I don't think I can make my videos any better unless yeah, I go I agree, out of my yeah. way 
to film some ridiculous stuff that isn't part of my day. But for me to film like my, my current flow of my day with everything that I have going on for me to vlog that. Mm -hmm. Um, and especially when I was adding all the cinematics in, I was like, I don't think I can make these any better. Like, I don't know what From I could do. From a production do. value standpoint yeah. or just told like a contact across the I, board? I guess every, everything. A production value, absolutely. Like there's nothing I could do yeah. besides hiring a production team to like, yeah. you know. Yeah, cine- yeah, yeah. Like a boom mic. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like, like, it's like, so production value for a self film video, this is the top tier content that yeah, I, I, I could possibly produce. I'm like, okay, then it's the part of the content. But then I'm like, okay, like if if I need to run these businesses and run this this team of what I'm doing, and just film my life and make it relatable to like, Hey, what are you actually doing? And not do, going out of your way yeah. to do things. Mm-hmm. You still, no matter what, you always kind of like go a little bit out of your way to film YouTube videos. But I was like, this is the content that I can give. And I guess my spin on it is that I also add humor into the videos. Yeah. I'm like, I, I'm, I'm, I'm saying a bunch of funny jokes. You know, I got, yeah. I got this cute dog. I'm like, mm-hmm. I don't know. I yeah. don't know what else I can give people. <laughs> That's the most important you know, the energy. But once again, we are coming back to that. Like with people, normal people just don't understand. Yeah. I appreciate your videos a lot. Like literally because of that, I see how much time yeah. you actually put an effort in those videos. So even though it's not like, nothing like viral that you said, just day in a life. I yeah. really love to watch them. And also I have a question since like, uh, uh, you've been like, I've watched you since the beginning, basically. So the, was there any time that you like blew up or you just gradually like- Gradually. gradually? I, I've always gradually. Like, I think that's the best, best the, option. The best, best option. The, the, the largest growth spurts I ever had were in the earlier stages of YouTube when people had these spurts and it wasn't from, nowadays it's you either, you either need to, I guess I don't know how to, I think nowadays to have exponential growth, it's not about really shout outs. It's about creating virality. It's Mm -hmm. about literally whether it be the trends, viral content, whether it be shocking or challenges, those are big. It's like you have to go that route because if you were just trying to vlog, unless you, because even if you have some lavish life at a certain point, like it's impossible to grow like beyond that. Um, and so, so the biggest growth spurt that I ever had was back in the day when I did a collaboration. The, the biggest thing that ever helped, helped my channel originally was in 2014. It was a really monumental point in my life because it was a first, I went to the Arnold Expo 2014. Me and my buddy just drove, yeah. drove up there and it was kind of unexpected. But I, it was where I had my first interaction with Steve Cook. It was where I met and filmed my first video with Christian. So I'm the first time wow. I ever met Christian and randomly... I went to say hi to Chris Jones. Chris and, mode, bro. Yeah. And Chris so, Jones. which is, he's the most authentic guy. He, Fucking he's, legend. Dude, he's, he's a legend. Yeah. I, I, I hope to, yeah, he needs, he needs to be on my podcast. Um, yeah, dude, Chris Jones would be wild. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, you're watching this, Chris Jones, yeah. jump on yeah. his podcast. Dude, bro. I was such a flex. Uh, Christian goes, uh, I set up Chris Jones to Shopify. Oh yeah. Yeah. I, dude. I heard that. I was like, but so, yeah, so I, so at, at, that, at that, he like shut, he, Christian like did his whole Shopify so for Chris Jones. Like, and and he's still so pumping cool. out videos. Yeah. And so I met Chris Jones at that expo and he ran, I was like randomly like, we should lift together. And he's like, what about tonight? And I was like, Fuck. all right, wait, let's, wait, let's do some deadlifts. <laughs> so that oh, night we filmed this video called like deadlift Jones, like mm. deadlift, <laughs> it was like deadlift broad and you know, Chris Jones uh, collab and he shouted me out. And the, at that point, and that was like the biggest like spike. And then mm-hmm. I started hanging out with Christian and Christian was, you know, just as popular then as he was now in a kind of a different, you know, r- retrospect. Mm-hmm. But, you know, he, I started interacting with him. And so the earlier stages was kind of like that exponential growth, I guess, from going from 15,000 subscribers to like 40 really fast. Like yeah. that was Is big. Is that video still up with you and Chris? Oh yeah. Hell yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's De- Deadlift Jones, dude. That was, actually, that was actually <laughs> my, my uh, next question because I know like you like vlogging and everything, but did you ever thought again to go like into that collab things? Because that can, again, like, boost up your basically. like collab stuff now yeah but see now like i don't know who i'd collab with man yeah, yeah, like true. it's i mean a, pr- a prime example is so jesse james west who um i've known for a long time he he what's funny about about him I'd, I'd love to chat have a discussion like on camera with him is because he's been making content for like super long time he's making like lacrosse videos back in the day Eight yeah. Years and, already, yeah. and and, no and, one knows he, about and it, he yeah. actually came before he started blowing up he came to my ever forward pop up in New York, like waited in line to chat. Yeah. And then he actually DM me a while ago. I could probably find a DM, but he, this is before he started this viral content. He asked if he could come like work for me, like intern yeah. 
intern yeah. for me. And I was like, I, I, I was like, I don't like everything for that's, you. That's yeah. cool. He he said multiple times that you're the person he like looks up to. Oh, definitely well, for YouTube. Well, if, with everyone wants to collab with you. Like, doesn't matter if they have right now ten <laughs> million. Like, yeah. you're OG. At the end of the day, like, like two years ago. Well, so so, with so, so so what I'm getting at is that you know he in the fitness space, along with some other big ones, or Will Tennyson, you mm -hmm. know, making that challenge content. There's another guy in the fitness space I've never heard of has like 2 million subs that this unspeakable guy brought up that does these challenges I've never heard of. Yeah. Don't know his name, but he's another huge one. And does fitness is also pretty big on. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Do, doing these like kind of yeah, challenge yeah, stuff. Yeah, yeah. But I don't really think these collaborations and these shout outs do much anymore. Um, they're not, they're not what they were. Cause mm -hmm. for example, Jesse James West did the old man prank video, mm -hmm. right? Um, and in that he asked me originally to be in it, but I was traveling for us. So I couldn't. And so he had like, you know, Christian and he had David from how to beast yeah. and, you know, linked all their, their channels and stuff. But like David, I asked him cause I, you know, get, keep in touch with them uh, really closely with like YouTube stuff. Yeah. No, did, no did, channel growth. Yeah. No, like his David's next upload didn't have any sort of and the video Gross. was only like eight minutes. It wasn't even a, well, I don't think it monetized ex Exactly. It. Yeah. So it's like un people, people nowadays, especially from these like kind of like challenge stuff, unless they go to a channel, like they want more of that challenge stuff. Mm -hmm. So unless you're uploading that is yeah. you need to have content right. that's so close to what the person that shouted you out, yeah. you know, is doing or else, cause that's like, you know, if people come to you for your content and your content's significantly different, mm -hmm. you know, maybe a hundred people, let's say a hundred people yeah. go from you yeah. to him, maybe only five are actually gonna be like, oh, I also like this type of concept, but yeah. maybe yeah, 95. It's people. not like automatic. It's not just cause like this, this person like tagged me and shouted me out. Like everyone's gonna follow me. Like his and, 100K and following is gonna all follow if, me. Like, it, it, if anything, works. nowadays, if anyone like shouts me out or whatever, I almost wanna give a preface to be like, hey, yeah. if, before you guys come over to my channel, do not subscribe to my channel unless you're actually going to watch because I'd rather have yeah. better yeah. <laughs> a better yeah, view yeah. to sub Engage ratio. Yeah. I, yeah. I I don't want you know another hundred k subscribers yeah. well, on YouTube. That's and what's get going on now 4, with, with like reels views. and stuff. Like people are getting people have like forty thousand followers, but their posts are getting five hundred twelve likes. Bro, millions, like, yeah. People have millions how, how? of YouTube subscribers from from YouTube Shorts, and this yeah. is, it's just basically TikTok for yeah. YouTube. But you can mm -hmm. subscribe so easily that people because Dude, Jared, that, that, Jared, that's Jared's bike. That's what I'm saying. That's bikes explore. They never keeps engagement like yep. that's why i asked you about that it's is it regularly that's why you have engagement and everything because yeah. I, I have abysmal growth on on social platforms yeah. like i <laughs> you know I'm, I'm at like what th 300 something for youtube yeah. and yeah. instagram yeah. which is kind of weird that they're very similar that's good. That's yeah. but like my growth is so slow like i know they're they're good they're great numbers i'm super proud of like what i've built but mm -hmm. the i grow there's a time for on YouTube for a bit, I was losing more subscribers than I was gaining. Oh, wow. I would check my thing and it would say you're, you're down 200 subs wow. right now. My past 30 days, it says like up like six or 700, which is the most it has mm -hmm. ever been. And that's what's funny is I post, no one got it when I was kind of poking fun with Christian, but when he came back on YouTube, he posted uh, his analytics after he came back and it said like past 30 days, like 4,000 new subs. And I was like, oh, yeah, yeah, this that. motherfucker. <laughs> I was like, went away for seven months, comes back to get 4,000. Yeah. I was like, I've been uploading and twice his a revenue. week well, and I'm losing yeah. subs. Yeah. Like, 10 racks, <laughs> well, well, like 10 racks in a month. Know. But still in the end of the day, you're way more successful than all those people that are having even millions on YouTube because you're yeah, your but, business but, 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 but and everything. Again, you know, you know yeah. why? It, it comes down to this ego thing that I have because I started with YouTube and yeah. no matter the financial success that I've had over the years or the business that I've created, I still like uh, associate myself. I identify with YouTube. Everything Be started from YouTube. Exactly. Yeah. So I take so much pride because I know, I know, and I hope this doesn't come off like cocky or anything, but I know how much effort I've put in over the years and I know the quality that I've had increasing and I know the consistency that I've had and I know how, how hard I've worked on this YouTube and that's why it sucks when I get dips down because, yep. you know, I've been, I've been putting in the work. I haven't that's been slacking. Too. I haven't, like no one can look at my videos and be like, wow, his videos are getting shittier. Like yeah. it's like, yeah. Have you, have you spent time um, like analyzing sort of the new, the new way that YouTube is promoting and everything like that nope. too. So like that, that's something that I would say. Like, I'm an old it, fart, bro. I, I, I'm so stuck well, in my ways. Well, but what I'm saying is like, no, I'm not saying change the content. I'm saying more like, if you know the product is really good, all you gotta do is get that in front of you eyes and yeah. then people will stay. So like even things like YouTube introduced hashtags not that long ago, do you use hashtags? In nope. Your, okay, so the first three hashtags you use in your description pop up and become like this thing that people can find outside Yeah, but, I, but with my vlogs and stuff, I'm like, what am I gonna hashtag? Well, you like, could, you could literally just do like- In my dude. video yesterday, I installed a ceiling fan. A ceiling, dude, hashtag <laughs> ceiling fan. Hashtag swear ceiling to fan. God, ceiling fan, how, how, how to install Seriously, ceiling fan. Like, but there are things like that, like, ob like there are obviously <clears> more yeah. popular times to post during the day. Do like, you wanna know something interesting? Is, is I've never played around. I've I've uploaded my videos 
at 9 a.m. Eastern time mm-hmm. since the creation of my YouTube channel. And <laughs> is, I, and is I, that I, awesome? I don't know. It's just what it's, it's what I've always done. Right. And it's just what I've always done. So even when I moved to Texas, I still upload them <laughs> at 9 a.m. Eastern. Yeah. So I upload them at 8 a.m. And it's just what I've always done. Right. There, there was a time when I was uploading. I used to upload four times a week. Oh, wow. uh, back when I had a full-time job, which is even crazier, right? Uh, yeah. <laughs> but I would upload four times a week. It was like Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, and Sunday. And uh, then I uploaded like Monday morning, Tuesday evening, Thursday morning, oh Sunday God. afternoon. It was like different times, but now 9 a.m., 9 a.m., 9 a.m. That grind did pay off, right? When did you realize, basically, I know the video that you filmed, uh, that you quit your job nine to five. Why? Like, why did you do that? What did you realize? Okay, I can live from, from uh, YouTube, basically, or what happened to Well, me? so I've I know been wor- Christian told you to. Well, I, told I, you, right? I've, I've been working my full-time job for three years. I, I essentially started YouTube the exact time that I graduated college. So, like, when mm-hmm. I started my full-time job was when I started YouTube and or social media. So, three years, I created content while working the, the job. So, that was, I shut out everything in my life because I was so into content because I was uploading four times a week. Uh, for yeah. a, a couple, like probably the first like year or two. And, you know, from eight to five or whatever, I couldn't do anything YouTube related only on like my lunch break or after hours, but then I had to go film. And luckily it was easier back then because people just wanted fitness content. So everything yeah. was just gym, 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 yeah. gym, every yeah. single video. So different back then. Yeah. So um, it, it wasn't until I, I probably could have quit year two. And every time I'd visit Christian, Again, I, I say in the podcast with, with Christian and I that he is the ability to dream bigger than anyone I've seen. Mm-hmm. And I like, you know, poke fun at it a lot, but I admire it so much yeah. because he just has this vision that I think he, he, it's like, it scares the shit out of me. I think it scared a lot of people to like take the big, as big of risks that he has, yeah. but he just, he just has this mindset. And I remember when I would visit him two years in, he'd be like, why are you still working, bro? Like quit your job, quit your job, quit your job. I was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And in and my head, even then I was like, I was like, bro, you're making a lot more money than I am. It's easier said than done. Right. Yeah. But he was just like, just go all in, go all in, be like, do it, do it. And so for, from year two to year three, I started tracking my finances. And this is, this is when I had launched ever forward as well. So I was including that in there. Um, even though I, it was, it was like the money from ever forward was just staying in kind of ever forward, but just, all that together, I tracked my finances in like my little notes app on my phone for like every single month. And Mm -hmm. once I got to a year of seeing that it was within 500 to a thousand bucks each, like, you know, give or take, right. Um, it was so consistent for a year. I was like, okay, I can do this. And then I, I quit in July of 2016 and you know, it was crazy. Cause like for that whole week that I was planning on quitting my job, I kept each day I'd go in and be like, because at the time I'd moved to DC in my, my home office, I was kind of working remote in DC mm-hmm. at another office, but my boss was in Virginia. So each, each day for that like week or two before I was like, I'm going to quit. I, like, I'd see the yeah. phone, I'd be like, pick up the phone, call your boss, call the boss, today's the day. And I'm like, nah, you pussy, I'm not going to do it today. So like, and then I, the day that I did it, man, it, it's, it's, it's so interesting because the day that I called him, it was July 4th weekend. And <laughs> ruin that shit for him. I know. Well, no, well, no it, it was, it was when I called him and, and told him that I, I, th- I think I'm going to leave this job. It, his response was, he's like, good. Like, yeah, absolutely. He's like, I knew this was coming. He's like, he's like, if if I, you if, already about your YouTube and yeah, yeah, because I got fired oh, from cool. my first job for YouTube. Uh-huh. And then I went to another job. So yeah. they knew all about it and they would even give me shit for it. <laughs> but, um, when I did it, he was like, if I was in your shoes, he's like, I would do the same thing. That, he's like, that's exactly that's what so my cool. boss said to me. Yeah. Shout I just take to off work boss. to like go to like go do a shoot. I would take yeah. off. And he, he would know that too. Yeah. That's and cool. it was, it was cool seeing him so supportive. He's like, yeah, he, you know, he's like, yeah. I, ho- I hope it doesn't, but if it, you know, I hope it does, but if it doesn't work out, like yeah. come on back. That's yeah. Yeah. Right. The day I quit, so cool. everyone was like, we knew you were going to, we knew you were done. Like, yeah. So it was, it was, it was amazing yeah. support from that. And then, you know, it was, that was that was the first day of the rest of my life, you know, because you knew like if I don't go like with this so well, like I can always come back. Yeah. And, yeah. So and then yeah. year, year after year, I, you know, uh, financially have grown every single year. And at, you know, at, at one point it was YouTube was my socials were also growing year after year, but yeah. now, now we're all <laughs> decline. But you know, it, it's, it's also, you know, with YouTube is I, I have admit, I have accepted that the new wave is here and I'm kind of like the old, the old boomer, dude. No, I, I'm, I'm the I boomer in the so. fitness space, man. I don't think so. No, I don't think so. I think so. you just have, as I said, like everyone in the end of the day, still want to like do a collab with you, like yeah, not, like in. in I think you guys just, fully just, like revamped, different. like you and Christian. Like this is like yeah. almost like a, the next chapter, but in like a good way. Like yeah. it's a whole new, like 
Okay. There is a, now is like younger generation. It's, it's, it's interesting yeah. seeing it because early. I see. So when I see, like it, you know, for example, when I think the new, new generation outside of like you know you guys in, the, in this space, you know, you you think you see the the sushes and the the, mm. the Marcos and all the other people. Yeah, I don't yeah, know. Guys, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, like that. That's like just the only people I can think of off the top of my head because yeah. I see them. And what's interesting is I see I see myself yeah. because I yeah. see. Th- you know, just like their personalities and their 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 youth, right? Yeah. And and it's I see myself because I'm like I remember like how how people are interacting, how they're doing. I was like I was I was them when I was younger, and yeah. I, I was like it's 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 happening. It's it's the new it's it's the yeah. new wave. Like hearing you and Christian on the podcast, you're like yeah, we used to drink every weekend, like the trap yeah. house. I look around, I'm like all right, I'm in a trap house. I go to Heart <laughs> twice a weekend. Like, I, you were there last night, I'm right? Like, yeah, I'm like I, am I in that phase right now? Like this is that phase, I think, because. To me, I, we're still like all coming up. Like, as much as people want to say like, we're successful, we're doing. Like, I'm still like trying to yeah, find well, my way. Like, I'm still yeah. trying to make it work. Like, but uh, hey, I would still like to go to the club every weekend, dude. I you know, now just none of my friends ever do it. Do you want to come with us? Yeah. <laughs> dude, I, I I'd go out, I'd go out. Right. I, I'm going <laughs> out if you go out. I, I promise. <laughs> I've, been I never go fa- out. I've been through the phase already, like going out every weekend. But like now that it's like new to them. Like yeah. she's just 22. Yeah. Like it's new to him. So like. Yeah. I'm like joining. I'm like, this is, I feel like I'm 21 again. Like, this is cool. You know, what's funny is uh, Christian texted our group chat, which has a, uh, like, it's me, Sholly, Joe, and Christian in our uh-huh. group chat. We don't group chat as much as we used to, but. The dirty six, the OG but, dirty but six. It, but in there, uh, this was like, I don't know, maybe like a month or two ago. And he's like, damn, dude. Christian was like, he's like, man, I'm looking at all these, uh, like the, the younger guys stories out at the club and stuff. He's like, reminds me of like us, like back in the day going and like just blowing a bunch of money on like bottle service and stuff and yeah. drinking. And I, I remember my response, to Christian, I was like, Christian, you know, we can still do that. Right? <laughs> like we can still, we can still go and have fun you at know, the club. Like, yeah. like I was like, bro, we're, we're not dead. No, yo, I would heart love that. Still no, there. I would yeah. love that if, if we, if we pull up to heart <clears throat> and they're in the section next to us, yeah. bro, all of them, bro. They're like, yo, so you guys, you guys rubbed us. Up. Dude, no, Christian, Chris, <laughs> we used to, we used to go out like y'all think y'all go out a lot. No, Back in my day, dude, <laughs> dude, much. it'd be like, we would, we would literally go to the club like Thursday, Friday, Saturday. Like those women I played soccer. Yeah, yeah th- like bottle service Thursday, Friday, Saturday. It'd be like a Tuesday. Christian and I would end up at like uh, some after hours club because we go. Like we were we were going to the getting <laughs> I mean, bottle service. I'm in that phase right now. No, I, I think I'm in that phase. I, I did that. I did that. That's why I don't like. Which and, and there's did you go to? Clay Spire. We would Spire a lot. Every time I would visit, it was Spire. Really? Yeah. We, haven't, All, we haven't done Spire yet. I think. Yeah, it would, I guess now it's it's an eighteen and up club, so it's like yeah. a lot. You know, I'm thirty two, so it's like probably super weird if I go. <laughs> but to you don't go club. out, but you still enjoy. Like the weekends, you have margaritas, this and that. <laughs> the weekends, <laughs> no, I mean, every day. Sorry, my bad. Tuesdays, Wednesday, Thursdays, bro. Fridays. Yeah, yeah. No, you but still it, enjoy. It's, it's like crazy because Sush gets he's been getting shit for like all you do is like go out. All you do is like that's fine, man, dude. That's it, the it, thing. Like that's twenty twenty one years old. That's like, normal. Literally yesterday, I like I had a big. I, I edited a young LA photo shoot, a video shoot all day. I was working, and then I went out at night. Like I, I, I think the, the only I'm time, still productive. The only first of all, I don't give a shit what people do, right? So it's like if you want to go exactly. out all the time, I'm just like, hey, just, you know, if you got to get your shit done, exactly. Mm-hmm. And, exactly. and yeah. back in the day, we like as long as you can, you can go go party, go club, go spend a, you know, and it's wasting, but go spend a <laughs> yeah. whole bunch of money on bottle service. I love it. It's fun as shit. Yeah. Like I, I love it. The same, yeah. And it's like, great. It's like, enjoy yourself, spend the money that you worked on or, yeah. you know, worked for, but it's like, you know, if you're getting your shit done right. yeah. and you I know, wouldn't, I wouldn't be there if, if my work wasn't done. Like yeah. I had a good yeah. day. I got my work done. I edited all day and I went out but and enjoyed myself. It, it's also, exactly. it's also important to have your, your friend group around you to also be on your ass. Like, like we tell each other sometimes, like, all right, I'm just going to call him out. Like Brandon's like, yo, we should go to clay. And everyone was like, like, no, we're going out tonight and we have shit we got to do. So yeah. like, yeah. you have your support group around you to be like, all right, look, yeah. Like, yeah. we're here to make sure you're getting your shit done. Mm-hmm. And like the growth that these guys have seen in the past, even six months that we've all been hanging out and stuff, it's, it's really cool to see them sort of coming into their own and, and growing and maturing and shit like mm-hmm. that. It's dope. No, I'll, yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll enjoy like when someone like, whatever, eats cheat meal or go out or whatever. Do you think only thing like, I don't like, for example, if I eat my clean meal or I don't want to go out because I need to work and someone puts that like on my back, yo, but mm-hmm. I don't go out. I hate that. There's the only part like when someone yeah. like, you know, well, your friends are always going to give you shit. <laughs> yeah, true, true. But it's like, like I'm doing good thing, you know? I'm yeah. Not, yeah. And, and, and that's like a tough thing. And, and that's like, if you choose to be in this environment where you know that kind of stuff is occurring on a regular basis, you need to either have the willpower to like, you know, 
say no or you need to have the thick enough skin to be like i know i'm gonna get shit if i say no but i just gotta hold my ground type yeah. of thing yeah. or it's you know maybe i need to adjust a little bit and like if you choose to live in the area that everyone's doing it like you know it is what it is but you know i i've been there and i still again i still really enjoy doing that stuff i'm looking forward to in september i'm going to a festival with like ghost in vegas and i'm still, it's gonna still. be a bend like a four day bender and like, sure. you know, it's already <laughs> preparing. Yeah. And yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm quite excited for it. And yeah. you know, I, I still love doing that stuff. And now it like kind of wrecks me a little bit more than it used to. Mm -hmm. But, um, yeah, yeah. I mean, it, it's cool seeing the younger, the new, I don't know what it's called it, like the new wave, right? Like the new yeah. wave of, of fitness influencers. It's cool seeing everyone going in and enjoying themselves yeah. because to be honest, everyone now is, nowadays in general it's like easier to make money on the internet right mm -hmm. but the new wave of let's say just influencers are seeing an, an, ex, an insane um influx of cash way more like in their first two years of doing yeah. this stuff yeah. than any of us saw in the first yeah. four years yeah. of yeah. doing it because it just it wasn't people weren't making truckloads of cash mm -hmm. with like sponsors and brand deals yeah. like they were like they are now um and so it's like I guess just the thing that I always like try to stress to everyone, like just, you know, handle your finances. Like mm. it's cool to buy the, the cool, like the fancy cars and spend all your money, but like just make sure yeah, you know what the fuck you're doing yeah. because um, you know, that money comes and it goes real, mm -hmm. real quick. And, you know, I guess I like to look at myself as smart with my finances because I started with very little money. You know, I've been working since I was 15 years old mm. throughout, throughout college. I worked every single day. Every, I, I had the same job for seven years through college um, at a, like a pharmacy food food counter thing. But I, I've been working since I've been 15. And I've remembered, you know, like I said, my rent was like 400 bucks and it was, you know, tough to like hit that. Well, I don't, I don't know. It, it wasn't tough to hit that, but it was like, it wasn't a little bit of money to me. Right. Yeah, yeah. So then I, I came into financial freedom, we'll call it gradually over time. There was never a point where it was just like, I'm doing okay and I'm fucking rich. You know, it's like, it, it, it wasn't like that. <laughs> no, that's how it is and, right now. And, and no, now there's right. a lot of people that are just like, <clears throat> I'm starting social media and I got, you yeah, know, 50 K flown in yeah, every single month. month. Like, yeah, it's like, it, 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 exactly. Yeah. And I, it's like cool to see that. And because I was like, I wasn't making that kind of money yeah. at your age. Um, and it's just, but it's just, I just I'm like, just make sure you don't spend it yeah. all. Yeah. Like, I, I don't spend it all. I, th I think the important thing, for them, for, I mean, any for anybody. So right now, yeah, it's a lot easier to pop off. It's a lot easier mm -hmm. to, to be like famous quick. But the thing is, the thing that you guys all did very well is you transitioned that into your own businesses, right? Yeah. Like you yeah. transitioned to like social media was still a source of income, but it's not your primary. And so like, that's the thing that all these guys got to do is like, you got to understand once you're in the light, that's the time to start something or to transition your audience mm -hmm. or to like take advantage of that. Because yeah. a lot of people are going to, like you said, flash in the pan, it's going to be there well, and then it's not. The, the, the biggest thing that I stress to influencers. Um, and again, it's my opinion is not the correct way. It's just like my, my, my view on everything mm -hmm. is people need to, as, as they grow and, and start in a space, ensure that they are developing themselves as a brand. Yep. Right. And not just like a cool personality, like a true, like themselves as like the brand, because a lot of people are making tons of money because they're working with whether it be certain supplement companies, clothing companies, whatever, mm -hmm. but everything that they do is so tied to this company that they are just like a walking billboard for this brand and because they're getting paid and they're like, you know, I'm this brand like, like built to, but I was like, the brand's making all the money. You think yeah. you're making good money? Imagine like the, right. the person who owns that brand, <laughs> yeah. right. Times the, 10. They're, they're, paying, right. yeah. they're paying you a 15, 20% commission. Mm -hmm. And yeah. you, and look That's at the money nice. you're making. Yeah. Now think of what you could make if you started your own company and you just don't want to work for, you don't want to build all this cash for couple years and it's good to build cash so you have money to then start something right but you don't want to have this crazy influx of cash and then when the next generation comes in yeah. and takes you out because you know they're more relevant than mm -hmm. you 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 then like you don't have anything to build your own brand because you were so you were that brand yeah i was the the ex clothing company right. sponsorship and everything you do is about that brand and yeah. you, you you didn't do anything about you i agree yeah. they could fold that company could go out and then mm -hmm. you know, what you got Right, like yeah, but you don't exactly. want to just be known I mean, for the guy who just engagement. promotes the brand. Like yeah, you know, you got to build your own image. You build and it, but it, you got to make money. Like you, you got to do that. And there, there's, too, there's, yeah. a, there's a balance. Yeah. But also, there's a fluctuation. There's money because your engagement is not always the same. Mm -hmm. you know, so month to mm -hmm. month, you don't even know how much you earn in the other day. But when yeah. you don't own your own business, probably I don't. But um, you probably yeah. Know it, yeah but it, it's tricky, you know? man. A lot of pe a lot of people 
everyone either, you know, A, I'm going to start a clothing company or, you know, I guess now it'd be maybe a supplement. Making supplements is a, is a whole tricky other thing, but like mm-hmm. most people just go into clothing, right? Like that's like the first main thing that people try to go into. Merch. Yeah. It, merch it's, it's like, <laughs> <laughs> merch is the way to go, bro. I, I, it's funny. Every single person that comes up to me yeah. when expos were a thing mm-hmm. and I'm like, I'm thinking about starting a clothing company. Like I'll be like, first thing in my head, I'm like, don't. Don't. Yeah. And if you do go, I'm telling you, like, go the merch route. Like, yeah. it's yeah, yeah, yeah. because Slowly. I think I think a lot of people look down on merch because they're like, it's not as good as overseas. But I'm like, dude, the amount of fucking headache that I deal with yeah. going overseas yeah. is just like you want to smash your head against the table. Yeah. And we, we talked about this oh, yesterday. It's it's all it's about branding. It's about your audience, it's about how strong of a personality like and a brand that you are. So like, yeah, yeah you could print whatever on a blank T. And if your audience fucks with you, like you're going to, yeah, it's going to go. Yeah. Yeah. You're going to sell it. Right. Like there's no point in going overseas. If like you don't have the audience or that's, that's going to support you. Mm -hmm. Like it's about the brand. Absolutely. Starting with that and you see like people buying that, then you can like already start thinking of, and it's growing basically. You know what I mean? Like you're selling your merch with, I don't know what stands Dorian here and people buying more and more. Then you can start like thinking probably like, you know, I'm going to actually start something serious. And and just a lot of people think that like just overnight they're like i need to start a company and like let me just sit down and think of a company and like for me it never worked like <laughs> no. that it's just it just kind of falls into place like you mm-hmm. just realize the easiest way to start any sort of company in my opinion is you look at your daily life the things you consume the things that you like and then you look for problems and yeah. of like oh i love this thing or i love this product or i love this food but i hate this thing about it i wish this was different and like how can i and then you start looking for solutions to that because business is just about solving problems people have and yeah. it's not about solving world hunger that'd mm-hmm. be great if you could but it's like some people think it has to be some like really wildly impactful thing but yeah. it could just be can you make something more convenient for someone can yeah, you make it a value you, create you, some type of value. yeah you're just you're just trying to cut out pain points for people and yeah. if you, or, or create value somehow yeah and it's mm-hmm. like if you can do that that's like the way you start can you use specifics with sour strips then like what problem you identified obviously that is in line with with you and your content and stuff but like what things did you notice where you're like no i could actually start this well, the, the biggest thing for sour ships is, is the, comes down to the branding and just I lacked that like, there was there was no one kind of capitalizing on social media influencing in the candy space. Right. Mm-hmm. And then something simple as like the packaging. If like I, I looked at um, what I did is, is as a super big, you know, candy person. Right. You know, I'm like, OK, well, what do I buy? What's like a, a really fucking annoying thing about candy is that if I, if I don't eat all the candy, I can't reseal it. And if I want to reseal it, I got to buy the giant value pack, which is way too much. Um, and so I was like, OK, for the packaging, we need to make sure that it has a resealability. And if you look around every single candy company that makes a let's say a two to six ounce bag, they don't use a resealable. And at first I thought they were just it's on purpose. Yeah. Well, I, yeah, I thought they were like just dumb and I was like, look at me, I'm a genius. <laughs> yeah. I thought of something no one ever did. And I'm, I'm realizing now, not only is it real expensive to make those types of bags, but when you get into massive amounts of production, you, there's only like the, the type of bags, these machines called like, like flow wrappers, right. That are making these certain types of bags is there's like production capacities with using certain types of packaging mm-hmm. goods. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's just like, how much can you, you know, pack? Right. So, I'm learning of why people don't do that, but I think that's like the value that uh, that we brought to it was you know convenient packaging, so branding and packaging, and that was the hole that you. I saw mean, you you have to have a great product, but at the end of the day, like I said, it brand is the most important thing for anything. Mm-hmm. You know, you look at you look at this like this T-shirt right here, right? So like this T-shirt, how much are you guys gonna sell it for? Thirty bucks? Yeah, yeah 30, 30, 30, 30. Okay, so yeah. the, that's like the the dollar value that you're gonna put on this. Now this exact shirt. If it had the Supreme logo, same shirt, mm-hmm. same, same everything. It is now a hundred dollar t-shirt, but yep. the shirt is the same shirt. And if you took all the logos off, it is now a $15 shirt. Mm-hmm. What, and if, but if it's the same, like literally the same manufacturer of everything, it, because it, 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 it's not that it doesn't matter. It's just the brand is brand the, value is everything. Yeah. It's just like, if you took a pair of alpha elite leggings, they're uh, what's, what's their super, Oh. Am- amplify, amplify, amplify yeah. right? Yeah. Every girl yeah. wants Amaz- to Amazon burn Alphalete yeah. down because they're <laughs> yeah. out of stock yeah. on Amplify, yeah. right? Yeah. If you took a pair of Amplify, if I took a pair, like, you know, I have a clothing company, right? Ever Forward. So if I took took Christian's fabric, sent it to my manufacturer, there was an extremely high chance that I could replicate the exact yeah. Amplify legging. Mm-hmm. And I could, and let's say I didn't even know Christian, and I was like, guys, I've recreated Christian's Amplify leggings. It says this other brand. It is this same fabric, same fit, same colors. And I'm going to sell it to you for $15 cheaper 
girls would still not want it mm. because it doesn't say alpha lead on it yeah, because yeah, it's the yeah, brand yeah, that they that they that they built and it's a lot of people think they need to revolutionize something and it's yeah. brand 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 mm. you have to have a good product like that that's a thing but it's it's not that the product should come second but it's brand is almost more important than what the actual thing completely, is completely because sure. at the end of the day everyone has access to almost everything that everyone else can have access to yeah. same type of thing why do you buy you know a four dollar bottle of essentia water when you can clearly get a bottle of you know Dasani, the same thing mm. and you know for for a for a dollar <laughs> right or, or, I'm, apple, I'm or like, apple everything yeah. apple you yeah know? exactly it's, it's yeah. just like a lot of people will pay more for the same thing because of the brand that it's built or the way that they feel the way that, that they're associated with yeah. something well i would even venture to, so you said not that you don't need a good product but also like <laughs> <laughs> excellent branding trumps poor product every uh -huh. day of the week. Like like you can have excellent branding and a poor product and people still fuck with it because it's about that brand. Like think yeah. about when Anaka started, they were printing on the fucking Gildan tees. Like those tees sucked. They, they when you dried them, they got small mm -hmm. as fuck. Like yeah. the fit wasn't good, but it was the branding and it was the logos and it was everything that people fucked with that people wanted to get it. They didn't give a shit. They would pay however much money yeah. it costs for a Gildan tee. But yeah, so in, the, in today's world, would you say like it's important then since we are talking about branding too, that you need to have a like bigger social media platform or is it possible to start from the scratch when no one even knows who you are? I think it's just how you go about it. I mean, look at, look at Shali with Anaka, crushing it with Anaka. Shali, al although has a large respectable following, does not have the largest following in the world, yeah. right? Um, but he also has you guys, you know. Exactly, him. but but he, he, he took the people that do have the social media following, you know, just because he, if, if Shali didn't have all these other people and he just tried to push it as just as Shali, it probably wouldn't be as effective as mm -hmm. now he has all these other influencers yeah. and all these other, you know, um, yeah. you know, people selling it and he built this community and this brand and that's why it's popping off. If, if, if you, if you come out with legacy loading mesh shorts, you're not going to sell 50,000 of them like he is on a launch, you know, <laughs> right. and it's be, and it, you could be like, no, they're, they're the same shorts, man. Yeah. They're, the, they're the same mesh shorts. It's like people are like, I don't care. Doesn't say Naka, yeah. you know, like they want, they want the brand and, and having that social media, it, people ask me of like, do you think Sour Strips would be like as successful as it is if you didn't have a social media platform? It's like, well, probably not. Right. But yeah. I think what, and, and people, and yeah. people will assume that, um, that that's the only reason it's successful or like, like it was, it was so easy for me to start a company because mm -hmm. I was following. I'm like, and what I say is I'm like, yeah, yeah, yes, it springboarded it, but I was like, it took me, let's see, at the time it would have been like seven years, but like I, I worked for seven years building right. up that social mm -hmm. media right. to then make it easy to launch a business. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I, so it's like, yeah, yes, it, it will be easy, but like spend seven years building something right. and yeah. then, then it'll be easy for you to start something else. Yeah. Like, That's I hate, like this podcast right here. That. Like, yeah. Like the reason we were able to get these guests, we we're able to, we got the views we get is because we, we built a name for ourselves and we were respected by all these people. Yeah. Like if we just start a podcast, we're not going to get the same views that we'd have now. Like you're, you, you probably get asked to go on podcasts all the time, right? Yeah. Like, well, yeah, we, we, we're you know first connected with everyone. You yeah. Know? Well, so like, you you got to yeah. build respect. You got to build your like, name, how, build your brand. How will we call you, for example, if we don't know each other, you know, right yeah. now you, yeah. you'll probably be like, oh, I receive everyday messages for yeah. a podcast. Like why would you come? Yeah, to but to get in this position, like, it's been years. Like, yeah, I, like yeah, that, that makes I've been doing this since 2016. To knock someone because of their social media and saying their business is successful because of that will Bro, like the social media is the business yeah. as well. Like, it's and and, and people are it's people platform. are people are just smart with how you, how you you know do business. Yeah. Yeah. You anyone could look at Charlie for example, and be like, Inaka is only successful because you got all these influencers from your products. Like, yeah, no shit. Like, I, that's yeah, the that's point. Yeah, that's exactly. The point. Yeah. exactly. And, and I think people, uh, anyone who will say will knock someone else's business and say something is easy because of this, because of that, yeah. you only got this because of that, um, is comes from insecurity sure. and it comes from like them kind of like fighting their own kind of like demons. Yeah. Like why couldn't you do that? I, I, yeah. Exactly. 100%. Because 100%. anyone who like truly is like an entrepreneur or like wants to start something won't be, they'll be too busy trying to build their own shit than trying to knock someone else down. Or yeah, yeah exactly. Or they're going to look at that, that success and be like, okay, shit, how can I do something like that? Maybe not the same, but like, how can I incorporate that success in my business? Like that's yeah. how, exactly. that's how you're supposed to be thinking when you're building a business. When and you're, and you're an entrepreneur. you should be replicating the, the successful uh, ways that other businesses are, yeah. are finding success, right? You should replicate that because it's working for a reason. Mm -hmm. You know, it, it, I'm Christian and everyone, most of their business kind of strategies probably replicated Gymshark because yeah. they're like, this seems like a, a good thing to do because yeah. it seems to be working for that. And, you know, even- look, Nike. Yeah, it, it, exactly. Yeah. And, you know, Shali is a great example of someone who took advantage of the 
TikTok mm-hmm. influencer boom. He he capitalized on it and yeah. it paid off big time for him and is a seen great success. And I think um, you know, he he went from a brand that a brand that was successful in its own right to being the brand that everyone knows today. Yeah. And I think people like maybe probably don't appreciate the, the, the amount of work that it had to take to go from point A to point B. Mm-hmm. And just because he did it in a smart way and it catapulted his success yeah. doesn't, you shouldn't downplay, yeah. you shouldn't downplay that, that ability because yeah. that was a smart business strategy. Yeah. Move, you could right? replicate the way he like make a product that's good that people want. Yep find yourself a Marco, someone that who has like that power, that social media reach and then just take off from there. Exactly, man. Yeah. And yeah, it just, anyone could, anyone could do that. Anyone could replicate that, make a good product, get it in the right hands of people that have that audience. And then, and, and, and again, that's off. why it, it all comes back to, to brand there, man. Yeah. Like it just all like Branding, again, your platform, everything. Any of us can make, you know, I used to use the mesh shorts, but like anyone can make mesh shorts. We're not going to sell like Shaw like can, yeah. you know, uh, and I'm sure there's a product like, well, I don't want to say, you know, it probably crushes, but I'm like, I'm like, oh, like, you know, like, or I, again, I could replicate the Amplify leggings, put every yeah. forward on it. We'll sell some, but it, we're not going to sell it like Alphaly because yeah, right. it's people, people put on a, a pair of shorts, pair of leggings, you know, they, they people want to be a part of something yeah. and people want to be a part of that community. Key. That's the key. And it's, it's, it's not, again, it, it the product has to be good mm-hmm. or else people are not going to come back or they're not going to, you know, continue or to purchase it'll be known it. as like the, uh, like the, the just, second version of the amplifier, yeah, yeah just like, like a yeah, like a quick trend, like a knockoff. Yeah. And but it's it, people want to be people want that community, that that feeling, and it's yeah. something as little 100%. as again what, what Charlie's created is is amazing. Yeah. What what Christian has created, I mean, every, everyone that's created, I, I just use them because they're like you know my close friends, yeah. like like easy to reference. Well, yourself but, too, yourself too. You yeah. But it's it, it's, it's even as little even with with sour strips again. It's something as simple as you know, a food product, but I created that social media community around it that people, and you create a brand that people want to post. Right. Mm-hmm. Like every brand that anyone creates, you should think, how is this going to look on Instagram? Like how, how is this going to look? And that's what like, would people want to post about this? Right. Well, I mean, so real quick, like we, really recently we had one of the reels that on, on our page that popped off and it was because Christian reposted that to his story. Like you never know, like, you, like if you you want to create something like that, that's that. It was literally just a clip from the Rust pod, yeah. but like you want to yeah. create something that like is shareable that people do. Mm-hmm. And br- like, yeah, like it's cool. He has that, that power. That, like something. I looked at the page we were getting like at, like likes, likes, likes. I was like, what the fuck's going on? Someone had to repost it. And and I, and I think also is a lot of people who start stuff um, have this expectation that people people should share my stuff. People should give me a shout yeah. out. People yeah. should do this. No. And at, no. again, it's no. the same type of like if you're going in with that mindset, I think you have a, a, a just a so it's a bad outlook, right? Yeah. You need to go in, but like, I'm just going to create great, great content and great, mm-hmm. and be consistent. whether it be products or whatever. And yeah. people will share it if it's good. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. And, and that's, that's what we need to focus on. And yeah. if people aren't sharing it, it's not because people are trying to make sure you don't succeed or <laughs> yes. whatever. It's yeah, just, not good. it wasn't good enough <laughs> yeah. for that person to share yeah. it. Yeah. No, and, I love that. and it's, 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 you know, a lot of people like, I, you know, even for, for example, man, it's like, you know, I'll get tagged a ton of times in my stories and I'll repost sometimes. And some people will, will tag me and then, I, if someone tags me in a story, there's like a 99% chance as long as I see it, like I'm gonna respond back to their mm. to a tag. That's the best way to get like an interaction from me. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But so I'll get responses sometimes be like, why didn't you repost my story? I'm like, yeah. is that why you tagged me? Yeah, like, so I yeah, repost? Yeah, like, yeah. I was like, I was like, you, you know, it's like people shouldn't expect certain things. Mm-hmm. And um, yeah, it's just, it. you just create good content, do do cool things. Yeah, it'll happen organically. You don't, 100%, and, and, man. And, you can't force it. I th- and I think like, especially, like having you on the pod, like the big thing is just authenticity, right? Like mm-hmm. you just, you be yourself, make your content about you. And like, that's, what's going to be, that. that's, what's going to, yeah, that's, what's going to make growth in the long run. Like yeah. you can't, you can't be. And that's, that's why this community is so strong because you guys created that like supportive, like state of like being supported to towards yeah. everyone. You know what yeah. I mean? Of course, yeah. as I said, like, as you said, million of people going to take you and anything, but people that you know, and you and Christian and Charlie and everyone like, are supporting you you said it like previously you guys kind of see yourselves in us yeah probably no 100 percent. and it's like you you are supported that's why also all of us are growing pretty fast yeah. because we are surrounded yeah. by you guys and all these communities like that that's why like that's really important you got you got to man and that's why even with 
you know, all my, my, my great friends that I'm surrounded by, um, I keep just repeating the same people, but like, you know, <laughs> you know, Shali, Heidi, all these people. And like, it's, it's so great that everyone is so proud of everyone's success and, you know, helps everyone as much as they can, whether it be, yeah. Hey, can you, can you model for my brand? Yes, absolutely. Hey, yeah. can, mm -hmm. can, can you go do this thing yeah. for me? Can you help like with this? And everyone's just like, yeah. no one's like, well, no. Cause like, then they're going to get sales. Yeah. That, you know, film, it's, filming the video for, with you, bro. But like yeah. I watched it like 10 years ago in, in Europe <laughs> and I texted you like, would you like, you don't have to do it in my head. Like you're probably going to say no, but like, I'm, I can give it a try. You know I what I mean? You will immediately like, yeah. Let's, that's, let's shoot a video, which means here we are, dude. That's yeah, like, that's which like means the, a lot. Yeah, for the me, it means a lot. The beautiful thing about add two minutes, like two minutes. The beautiful thing about like Houston and the people here and the the community that you guys have built is like, yeah, w w when we got here, we were we were, I mean, re like online, not super big, but like you guys took us in. Like, and when I say you guys, I mean everybody here that we all looked up to. Like, you guys took us in, showed us the ropes, like was there for support when we needed it. Yeah, and like that is like, that doesn't cost, well, I mean, besides time, like that doesn't cost you anything. And like yeah. for us, like now we're doing the same thing for other people, helping them get yeah. acclimated, helping them get their feet under them. And so like, it's just a never ending cycle of like being helped by somebody and then passing that on to the next mm -hmm. one. And yeah. it's just like, everybody yeah. is, everybody is succeeding. Everyone is like benefiting from that. And that's just like, there's, the there's room, thing. there's room for everyone to Literally grow no. on everything. And I think no one should try to be like a gatekeeper of, yeah. of any sort of success. success. Well, yeah. For Why? me in the end of the day, even if, Let's say, for example, my numbers go through the roof all of a sudden. I'm a million on YouTube. I will still look up to you guys. And dude, the, you know the, what the I mean? Even if I'm bigger or something, I'll be like, <laughs> and, and yo. And it's not like a, people are only being nice for this reason, but you, you never know who like, you know, yeah. you, you'd be nice to everyone because yeah. you never know because someone randomly is going to blow the fuck up and mm -hmm. then you, you shoot them off because you were bigger than them. And, and now you're like, please, like, let's do a collab. <laughs> you know, it's like yeah. that kind of stuff. So I yeah. try to be as, you know, friendly with everyone as exactly. possible. Yeah. As, yeah. I'm going to add someone in right now. So someone, we're on Instagram live and then someone's just going to pop in and they're going to ask a question to you. Well, you, don't, gonna be if, a good one. you don't have to you answer have the answer question that. if it's if it's cracked, but that's it's it's just one. one question. Someone said, where is Dorian from? <laughs> that's the question. What's up, dude? Yeah. You got somebody? What's going on? Where are you from? Uh, I'm in Galveston, bro. Right up the road. Oh, shit. <laughs> I, I, I lived in Galveston. Clearest water in Texas. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. You got one question to ask Max. Yeah. All right. So starting a business what would you do differently if you could have done anything differently? Like maybe like a tip or trick or something like. I mean, that's such an interesting whole question that I get because the easiest way to, to, to answer it is always, you know, every, every mistake that I've made has led me to this point where I'm at. So it's like, I'd, I'd love to go back and cut out a lot of my mistakes, but now I, I know so much more. But I right. think I think the biggest advice that I give anyone of maybe trying to skip some steps and not have as many mistakes is look at the people around you and try to surround yourself by by people that you inspire to be. And you know, the, the old saying that goes, goes, you know, you're the sum of the five people you hang out with or some sort of number like that, it, it really does matter. And if you, if you surround yourself with people who aren't doing much in your life, then they're not gonna be the ones that are gonna motivate you to you know, grow your business. And I think you need to be in a place where people are doing great things and you aspire to be like them. And you'll just learn by being a, a sponge and never be, never be afraid to learn, man, because right. it's like the yeah. day you stop I learning is the day that, you'll like, you, you, you could fail, man. Yeah. Right. That's great. Yeah. I appreciate that. Dude, that was a solid question. Yeah. yeah. Solid response too. There was a, there needs to be that a was real, the best his response needs to be a real. That was, right, that was a really good response. Thank you so much, bro. Oh, you editing? Hey, let's go, bro. Damn. Nice, bro. Uh, All right, man. Thanks for the Thank question. you. Y'all screen record while you're doing this? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's, um, no, that's, that's dope. And we talk about that, that all the time. Like environment is everything. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, why, why do you think people are moving here? Right. Yeah, I right. don't know where it, else I'd be right now. I, it, it like, I don't know where else I want to be. And that's what's so crazy about what Christian has created in I don't think people give, people do give Christian a lot of credit. And I think in my podcast, I, I, people were like, yeah, man, Max, you just trying to like suck off Christian right now. I'm like, bro, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I was like, I was like, bro, I was like, I don't like Christian literally changed yeah. the fitness none game. None of, us, yeah. none of us would be here. I wouldn't like, be here. No, no, bro, no, no, like, no, yeah, no, it's no. like he changed it. And, and Sugarland, Stafford, Missouri yeah. City, this area, none, none of y'all would be here if that yeah, gym 100%. didn't exist. That was funny. No one wants like, to be here. You have people traveling like 10,000 miles to go to fucking Missouri City. Yeah. <laughs> Bro, I literally stopped playing soccer and moved here because yeah. of him and you. The, the best thing is whenever someone comes visit here and they're like, 
like, oh, hey, Max, like, uh, you know, I just lifted at Alpha Leap. This is like the gym. Like, you're like, even Alpha Land. Um, like, like, what is there a dude around here? I'm like, yeah. uh, there's an Olive Garden down the street. I was like, I was like, Torchies, this like. is it. And and that's why whenever someone wants to move to an area like this, I was like, you better be laser focused on building yourself up because yep. if you don't love this kind of community that yeah. you're in, I was like, you're gonna be so bored because. Yeah. Yeah. You're I like sure all there. All there is is a gym. Yeah, yeah. That's why we like, like it because it's like our hub. We like we come bro. here, we grind, we go to the gym, we edit. We and, and I think people, like I think people travel here because they think that if if they travel here, they or if they if they move here, they will blow up. Yeah. And it's like no, you, you need to move here and put, you need yeah, to put, the work put in the work, yeah. like and make connections. Yeah. And, and there's a, a everything you could want in the fitness world is in right. this space. There's 100%. not a better place to be in the country. Yeah. Like period definitely, definitely like he's created the mecca like this is as weird as it is is that missouri city texas right now yeah. is the best place in the country yeah. if you want like a, a to grow in the, yeah. the fitness space yeah. that's um yeah i mean th this is the place like all the tools are here but that doesn't mean that you're gonna be a blacksmith right like you no, gotta come yeah. here and you gotta learn you're you gotta working. sharpen that yeah, yeah. and like, do, do you do you want to know why christian like built this place here because he didn't want to leave. That's it. Yeah. <laughs> no, yeah. He literally, he literally yeah. was like, I don't want to go anywhere, so I'm going to make everyone come to me. <laughs> that's and that's the craziest that's shit. That's that is real. crazy. Christian, we would drive into the Respect. gym, and he'd be like, that's where I went to preschool, right there. And like, he's lived in the same like 10-mile radius his entire life. That's crazy. And, and that's the fact crazy. that he's that like, I'm just going to build something so powerful that everyone on the planet Earth will want to travel to where I'm at because I don't want to go anywhere. That's, that's some mind blowing. Respect. That's some power. Respect. That's some power that very few people will be able to replicate. No. Like it will be able to have that same impact. I'm impacting a lot of lives. You guys are impacting a lot of lives, but like to, that, that's another level. And that's mm -hmm. what separates, you know, separates Christian as yeah. a, just a, like an icon in the, in the fitness yeah. space. Having and, his mom working in the, it, like ex making exactly. Her and like, you know, so that's cool. And that's what's, you know, is this new generation that is, is coming up. Everyone needs to, not like, you know, like pay respect, but everyone needs to like appreciate yeah. like something that someone else put in the work and built so that they have the opportunity to, yeah. to build themselves up. Him building this is the reason why we're all now like, yeah, yeah. We talk, exactly. we're we, growing now because we, we're in his, the thing he built now, we're in here and that's building why something a, a, Anyone who ever like will talk shit about like anything. I was like, do you understand how many lives this man has changed? And I was like, <laughs> and y'all are worried about like something like this? Mm -hmm. Like, oh my gosh. We, we've talked, I think we've talked about on pod before, but like, I mean, we even brushed on it today. Like just the, the one decision that he made to, to do all this, like, like we said, it, yeah. it trickles down to everybody. So everyone yep. that we bring in and everyone that they it's like bring a in. It's like right? just branching it's, off. Yeah. Like, like, you, you never know something something that you do, the impact you'll have on yeah. someone. And I know I, I talk so highly about Christian. It probably annoys people to some point, but it's just how much of an impact that he had on, on my mm -hmm. career and my life. Yeah. And it's just like everything you do, just you never know the impact you're going to have on someone. Exactly. And the first time, if I don't know how the, the saying goes, but something I used to say that like, you know, your first experience with someone could be the only experience you ever have with mm -hmm. that person. And it could be the, something that you say to someone could change their entire life like yeah. forever and, and have the, the complete direction of how mm -hmm. they're going to like feel about you. Yeah. I, I don't know when it like rant super long, but like the first experience in 2014, when I went to that expo that I randomly had with Steve cook, mm -hmm. I never knew who he was my, my buddy Daryl was like, there's this really popular guy, Steve mm -hmm. cook. If you can get a photo with him, And I like, was taking a picture like outside the line of Steve Cook and I saw it and he was on his break and he like waved me over and like came and talked to me or he like brought me in and talked to me. And like now I'm on the other side and I see yeah. like kind of that, but I was like my first interaction with Steve Cook was so good that he is forever in my, like in my mind as mm -hmm. like the most genuine, nice person I've ever in my life yeah. because of like that one, one interaction, thing. Yeah. one yeah. thing like, and it's, he went out of his way to take time to talk to me yeah. and it's like, and, and his interaction with me made me when I got to the point where I was meeting mm -hmm. these hundreds of people at ex expos yeah. that I was like, I want to give the same experience that S Steve gave to me yeah. that like his experience changed the way that I mm -hmm. try to give experience to every single other person. Yeah, like, it's like he, he, he had that impact. You want me. people yeah. to, when they meet you, like they walk away, like dude, Max was the man. Yeah. Like yeah. he's so respectable. Yeah. He was a yeah. great guy. We, like you talked to me and uh, it, yeah, it, same it's, thing. Remember in, in that I remember the first time someone came up to me, I was like, "Holy shit!" I'm when like, we yeah, filmed with the, with the Christian video, he mentioned it because, like, you know, when Summer Shredding is like, it's a whole role. Like, people want to meet him and everything. Yeah, and that was literally my first interaction with him, like talking face to face. I think, but it was like a so many people, bro. Like, and I was like, "No, I don't want to talk right now. It's not a, the best time." So the first interaction that we had was like, "How how's it going?" And uh, I don't know what he said, but my my answer was like, "I'm gonna be new, your new athlete. I'm gonna win the show." That's, go, that's it. Manifestation. And, and he was like, 
uh, okay, we have a photo shoot Monday. I'm like, okay, count on that. And that's it. I was like, I'm not going to bother you anymore. That's it. And he actually said that in my video from all the people you were like immediately like stayed in my head because yeah. everyone's like, oh, Christian, can I take a picture of this and that, yeah. you know? And I did want to do that, but like everyone's doing the same. So I'm like, yeah. <laughs> you know. First impressions, everything. Yeah, yeah. There yeah. he is. Absolutely. Uh, yeah. Where are we at? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Wrap this up, but uh, any last words, Max, for the people? <laughs> any last words? We're definitely gonna need to. <laughs> Thanks for it. tuning in. Need more sour strips, never forward, man. <laughs> now that this, need more ever forward. This, 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 this was good, man. It was. Uh, I I like. I don't do a lot of podcasts. Mm-hmm. I mean, now I'm like you know filming them, but like I I haven't been on a lot in the past like year or something. Mm-hmm. But it's always interesting because you know like you guys didn't ask me the question of like how did you start on YouTube? Like how did you start sour strips? Like because yeah. again, it's like. It's out there. Yeah, it's like it's out there, and like you, yeah. you, you, you. I think you pride a lot of information out of me that kind of made me talk about certain topics in a way that I've never talked about before, and yeah. I think that's like super cool. And just like you know, keep doing what you guys are doing, and I think that you know, Appreciate big it. shit will happen, man. Thank, thank you, you. And thank, thank you for coming. Thank you for coming. Thank, for thank, coming. Yeah, absolutely. For truly, go um, go watch Max's pod. Yeah, yeah. yeah. link the and link the pod on, <laughs> in the Instagram of the, the yeah. show and the notes. But that's it. Um, we'll see you guys episode, episode eleven. 12. We'll see you episode twelve. That's it. Thank you, Max. Peace. Peace. Peace.